Joining me, Anne Marie Hauser, Republican strategist and past communications director for former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty's presidential campaign. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, a former top lawyer to Congressman Barney Frank and talk show host on Pacifica Radio. This week, the controversy over mandatory quarantines reached a fever pitch. Multiple states implemented measures for health workers returning from Ebola hot zones. At the epicenter is Casey Hickox, a nurse who says her personal rights were being violated. She says there's no way she's going to infect anyone. I am completely healthy. You know, you could hug me, you could shake my hand. There is no way that I would give you Ebola. But Governor Paula Page says otherwise. As long as she's not touching other people or, you know, staying a distance from other people, then I don't see the harm. What I'm concerned about is infection of Mainers. Now a judge has temporarily lifted the quarantine, putting restrictions on Casey, but not isolation. Anne-Marie, what's your take on the judge's decision? Were lawmakers violating her personal rights or trying to protect the public? I think lawmakers and I think governors of these states need to do what is best for uh, for the folks in their state to protect them and what is best for the community. I'm so glad to hear she doesn't have any symptoms, but we don't know yet. The doctor in New York City didn't think um, that he had any symptoms and now he's been hospitalized. So we appreciate her selflessness to serve these communities in Africa, but if she could just hold off three more weeks and be, be understanding and considerate of her community in Maine, um, then I think that that would be much appreciated. Mark Levine, these state governors are, are stepping in because a lot of critics say the Ebola czar is not. Where is the Obama administration during all this? Well, I think the CDC has set forth very clear guidelines, and those guidelines have to be based on, on science, and these governors aren't basing them on science. Until you get a fever, Ebola is not communicable. Casey Hickox has never had a fever. Dr. Craig Spencer did not infect anyone, and he was out in bowling alleys and subways and so forth. Then he got a fever. Then he was hospitalized. Once you get that fever, obviously, you need to be quarantined. But until then, we shouldn't scare people by making people think Ebola is more easily transmitted than it is. Meanwhile, well, the White House has rallied in support of health care workers, saying when they arrive home from fighting Ebola in West Africa, they deserve to be treated properly. But the Pentagon has enacted a 21-day controlled monitoring uh, episode for all military personnel coming back from those same areas. Anne Marie, is the administration's message disconnected? I think they're all over the place. I think they've fumbled this from the very beginning. And I agree with Mark that um, we shouldn't be scaring people, but I also don't think we should be fast and loose. And what is three weeks in the face of a, 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 a terrible uh, disease that is ravaging a country? Why, why do we not just err on the side of caution? And I think you're seeing the governor step up and leading in the absence and the fumbling of the uh, Obama administration who's not leading. Mixed messages from the CDC early on, though, Mark. We, we've got the, well, many people refer to as Baghdad Bob. He was all over the place of Frieden early on. Do you still trust the government as much as you do did then now? You know, there's only been two transmissions in the entire United States. Both of them were at a Dallas hospital that was not following the guidelines. In fact, they turned away an active Ebola patient, uh, and then they didn't allow the nurses to wear the protective gear they should wear. So, because one Dallas hospital made some dangerous, stupid mistakes, and I, you know, maybe we should blame Texas for that, I don't know. Easy, I just blame the easy. hospital for that. <laughs> we shouldn't pretend that the entire nation is under some kind of pandemic. Yeah, it's but not. look at the polls. 80% of Americans are terrified about this disease. And agree that she should be quarantined and health workers should be quarantined. I don't see why. Clearly there's fear amongst the nation. If 80 percent of Americans are panicked, then to me that's a problem with the news media. No, they it's also a problem agree they should Governor be quarantined. Christie and others who are hyping something that is not I, I that disagree. dangerous. I disagree. I disagree. Bring him out Where is Ron Klain? Where is Klain? Where is the Ebola? We have, we have nothing to fear but fear itself and that fear hey, is dangerous. And I, deadly viruses. I like that. Mark Levine said that. Okay. <laughs> Numerous medical I professionals have come out against the quarantines, but many lawmakers say they want to protect the public. Well-known Dr. Anthony Fauci says there's a difference between risk and fear. So people extrapolate what they see in West Africa with what they think might happen here. And I think what we're seeing is a catastrophic health crisis in West Africa and an epidemic of fear here. All right, Anne-Marie, shouldn't lawmakers trust what these doctors are saying? 
I do think they are relying on science. I do think that that uh, that they're not trying to invoke fear or panic, but I also think that there's a fine line here. They're trying to strike the balance between the science and, oh, by the way, let's manage the government competently and make sure that our people are taken care of and Americans don't feel safe because there's been such bumbling out of the Obama administration um, since the beginning of this. Well, let's switch gears. The okay. 2014 midterm elections are only days away and many analysts say battle for the Senate is too close to call. One hotly contested races in Kentucky where 30-year incumbent Republican Mitch McConnell is facing off against Democrat Allison Lundergan Grimes. Mark, does Grimes have what it takes to topple the Senate minority leader? It's going to be tough. It, uh, listen, the, the irony is that I think that uh, Allison London, London Grimes would have done better to run with Obama rather than against him the way she has. Kentucky is a great example of where Obamacare is working very, very well. It's working so well that Mitch McConnell, who's always favored repeal, when asked the question, said, well, maybe not in Kentucky, because even he had to admit it's doing very well. I think she ran too far away from the president rather than recognizing the benefits that he's provided to Kentucky. Uh, Allison Lundergan Grimes, this is a woman who can't even say who she voted for, and Mitch McConnell isn't running away from Obamacare. Just yesterday he said he wouldn't uh, back away from using reconciliation in the Senate to start repealing and replacing Obamacare. So He won't look, do it in Kentucky the, the, because look, he knows how good it is to, in Kentucky. Look, look he's going to be the majority leader uh, in, in less than 90-some hours. So um, I think that Allison has run a very peculiar race, and I think that you've seen Mitch McConnell, um, you know, and does what he does very well. And, and that is represent uh, the, the voters of Kentucky in the Senate. Mark, I'm sure even you cringe because you've run for office. You're a Democratic strategist. When she was asked, did you vote for Obama? She could have said yes, but I have certain problems with his, uh, with his record. Or maybe she didn't vote for him. Who knows? How would you have... I would not have advised her to answer the question the way she did. I, right. As I said, I think she's running too far away from him. She could have said the truth, which was she was a Hillary Clinton delegate. She supported Hillary Clinton in the primary, and she supported the Democratic nominee in, in 2008. I think that would have been fine. It wouldn't even have been news. So I do think she's run a peculiar campaign, and frankly, I think she's run too far away from the president, who's done a pretty good job in Kentucky. All right. In terms of, of, of Kentucky, Emory, Republicans are favored to take the Senate here. What's mm -hmm. your bet on this? We win. We're looking at a Senate majority. I uh, Look, in 06, I was on the other side of this. I was on Mark's side, and we were looking at the wave coming at us, and it was brutal. Um, but, you know, the, the, the electorate has changed. The issues have changed. The, our candidates have done a great job. And what you're seeing is not just Allison Lundergan Grimes, but every Democratic senator um, who has voted with him more than 90 percent of the time absolutely running from him, not talking about Obamacare on the campaign, not even talking about Obama or saying that um, they agree with him or want him in a state to campaign with him. So I think uh, I'm very bullish and I'm very excited about next Tuesday. Too close to call, Mark, or what do you think? It's going to be a tough election for Democrats. I'm not going to deny that. I've seen the polls. I, I can't hide from the polls. Uh, Democrats have a problem. We tend to come out every four years in presidential years. We don't tend to come out in midterms. Now, to be fair, uh, in all of these states, the, the ones that would give the Republicans the Senate, you find that uh, those are states that Romney won by 14, 15 points. And so actually, the senators are doing better than Romney did in those states. That still is going to be really hard for Democrats. I encourage all Democrats to get out and vote. Remember Member elections are more often than every four years. Well, yeah. All right, and Republicans too then, right? What, what he just said probably helps the Republicans. No, I'm going to go out and vote too, they'll say. All right, at one campaign stop, Hillary Clinton made a questionable comment about corporations while stumping for a Massachusetts gubernatorial candidate, Martha Coakley. Don't let anybody tell you that, uh, you know, it's corporations and businesses that create jobs. You know, that old theory, trickle-down economics. Later, the Clinton camp backtracked on the statement, saying she was talking about tax breaks. Anne-Marie, could this gaffe hurt Hillary in a potential 2016 bid? Morris, I, I've, I was telling you this on this show a couple weeks ago. Uh, she's not a sure thing. She's not a great candidate. And she continues to say things like, we were dead broke and corporations don't create jobs. It just shows more and more that she is out of touch. So, you know, it's, it's problematic. And so, so you're telling me Bill Gates isn't a job creator? That, that does, just doesn't even make sense. Who do you think is, 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 
paying the taxes um, to create these jobs for and to, to make space to hire people to do these jobs at their companies. Mark, it's reminiscent of Obama saying you didn't build that. You didn't build that. What do you what do you make of what Hillary well, said? Well, we didn't. Uh, we, we didn't build the roads. We had the government pay to build the roads. What Hillary Clinton said. But we are saying, the government. Well, Where if, do you think the money comes the from? Full context of what money. she was saying. She was saying that if you give a whole bunch of massive money, if you tax middle class people and throw it in the hands of rich people, throw it in the hands of corporations, do they create jobs? No. Bill Gates will not create a single job if we just give him a billion dollars. He creates jobs when there's that's demand the for his products, and that's caused by allowing middle class and working class people to see their incomes rise, and that's. President Obama is doing much better. Wait, and to be wait. perfectly fair, Democrats aren't the only ones sending out the star power and making gaffes. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has been ping-ponging all over the nation to promote Republican candidates, but it was during a Hurricane Sandy speech in his home state where the old Christie bubbled to the top. I'll be more than happy to have a debate with you anytime you like, Guy, because somebody like you who doesn't know a damn thing about what you're talking about except to stand up and show off when the cameras are here. I've been here when the cameras aren't here, buddy. But until that time, sit down and shut up. Turns out the heckler was a Democrat and former council member. But Anne-Marie, will this bully image help or hurt Christie on the national stage? I like Chris Christie. I don't like that tone. Um, I think it's worked for him. It's brought him notoriety. It's 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 been a voice for people who don't have a voice and who are very frustrated about teachers unions and what's been going on in New Jersey. But I think he's going to have to be careful. I do think that uh, this could wear thin. I don't think I don't know that it's going to translate nationally. And look, I've worked for a presidential candidate. There are always going to be hecklers, and I'm interested to see how he is going to adjust his tone and adjust his speech in in, in further incidents like this. Mark is it a little bit late for him to adjust his tone. I mean, come on, he's on the national stage now. I think he is a bully. He always will be a bully. The candidate that Anne Marie worked for, Tim Pawlenty, everyone would, would say is a very nice person. People don't say that about Chris Christie. There are ways to tell hecklers to please be quiet and let me finish uh, without being the bully that Chris Christie simply is. Hillary becomes president, Mark. Chris Christie could become secretary of state. Put him in a room <laughs> with Vladimir Putin, and there you got it. Putin takes his shirt off. Christie, well, he keeps it on. This sounds but like a really bad movie, Mars. We win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anne-Marie Hauser, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on television. Thanks to you both. Thanks, Thank Mars. Thank you, Mars. We turn from politics to...